and welcome to worship on the third day of Christmas. I hope that even in these strange times you have managed to find and discover the joy and the peace of Christ coming amongst us as love incarnate, God with us. That joy is reflected in our opening psalm and we hear some opening verses from it. Psalm 96 verses 1 to 3. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all the peoples. Let us pray. God of creation, above and beyond us, God in flesh, close, right beside us, God in spirit, deep, within us. We praise, worship and adore you for coming here amongst us, for walking the earth just like us, for dying and rising for us. Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. Like the shepherds and the wise men, we bow our heads in humble adoration are amazed by your incarnation, continue our praising, giving glory to you, O God. Glory and thanks. Thanks for in coming amongst us, you showed us how to truly love, highlighting our own shortcomings. For the hurts we have caused, for the love we have not shown. Forgive us, God, for we are sorry. God in Christ, you come amongst us not only to show us how to love, but to declare your love for each one of us so that we can all know that our sins are forgiven in Jesus' name and rejoice that we are redeemed. God of creation, incarnation, present with us now, we praise, thank, worship and adore you, now and evermore, with ever grateful hearts. Amen. We're going to join together in song now as we sing the carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. After that, the Reverend Trevor Capstick will give us our reflection today.
Our Gospel reading for today is taken from St John's Gospel and is that famous prologue. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all people might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to all people was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hello friends, good to be with you again and happy Christmas. I uh, hope you like the sweater. You can only see the top half of it. Uh, reindeer's antlers, I think. And um, so I thought I'd gain the uh, seasonal spirit. And look at this. You can even have some flashing lights on the reindeer's antlers. Well, I'll knock those off and carry on with the Christmas reflection. Today, December the 27th, is the feast day of John the Apostle and the Evangelist. And it seemed right to uh, have a reading from John's Gospel um, and what better reading could we have for Christmas time than the opening verses of St. John's Gospel that uh, we heard just earlier. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And a little later it talks about the Word became flesh and lived for a while among us. There was a, a Methodist minister of ooh, 50 years ago called uh, Reverend Russell Maltby. And uh, one phrase or one quote that I jotted down once when I read it struck me about what we're celebrating at Christmas. We're celebrating what we call incarnation, God sharing in our human humanity, in our human lot. Um, and he said, in Jesus, God has committed himself to the human race for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse and forever. It's a phraseology of the marriage service, which underlines the commitment that God has towards us, his children, and indeed all God's creation. And so as we celebrate at Christmas, we're celebrating that God has committed God's self to us, each one of us as individuals and the whole human race and the whole of creation for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse and forever. St John began his gospel with this image of the word and I suppose we use words don't we to try and communicate to try and express ourselves and uh, we learn our first words probably from our parents or those who look after us when we're babies and toddlers. And this sense of uh, God communicating 
and expressing God's self in the word which we believe is the Christ. The word became flesh and lived for a while among us. Different translations put that uh, little text in different ways. I like these two uh, from modern translations. The Protestant pastor and uh, writer Eugene Peterson in his famous paraphrase The Message puts it like this. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. Moved into the neighbourhood. I love the idea of God in Jesus moving into the human neighbourhood. The religious leaders of Jesus' day didn't like Jesus entering into certain parts of the neighbourhood where Jesus was, whether it was in Nazareth and round Galilee or whether it was in Jerusalem. You remember some of the stories which caused concern, indeed anger, on those who looked on from Jesus. Jesus going into the house of Zacchaeus, that despised tax collector. And you can just imagine them tut tutting that Jesus should uh, contaminate himself by entering the home of such a sinner. And then Peter uh, visiting the home of Cornelius, the Roman soldier in Acts of the Apostles. And you can imagine some of the religious leaders tut tutting at a Jew claiming to be a pious Jew, uh, goes into the home of a Gentile. The idea, you see, that in accepting hospitality, um, whether it was Jesus or Peter, um, they were risking losing their purity uh, and um, their own people's racial and religious identity. Jesus truly came to dwell among us. He moves into our neighbourhood. Nicholas King, another translator who's a Catholic and a scholar, um, he wrote, the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. The idea of uh, God on the move, sensitive to our needs, making himself vulnerable, rather like a tent can be vulnerable to the elements, pitching his tent among us. It's another way of trying to say God's really entered into our humanity and lives amongst us to bless us and to love us. Some of you will have heard uh, the name Leslie Griffiths. Leslie is a Methodist minister, he's now retired. He was born and brought up in South Wales uh, and uh, for many years in the latter stages of his ministry, over 20 years, he was the minister of Wesley's Chapel in London, that famous historic uh, chapel associated with the life and ministry of John Wesley. I remember reading a Christmas sermon by Leslie some years ago and particularly an illustration that I thought was so uh, funny and wonderful that I wrote the gist of it down. And he was describing when he was at school, at secondary school, I think he was uh, from a poor background, but he got a scholarship to the local grammar school, probably for boys only at that point. Um, and he was writing about and, and preaching about um, three of his teachers. And uh, each one had a different personality and a different style. He talked about Mr. Owen, who was nicknamed sometimes Spouting Owen, other times Shouting Owen, because when he got cross, he would rant and rave, and he would use that long blackboard ruler to smack the palms of pupils' hands as punishment for their misdemeanours. Says Leslie, he thought he could frighten us into the world of learning. By shouting loudly enough, he hoped to gain pupils' obedience. Spouting, shouting Owen. And then there was Mr Evans, um, the art teacher. In fact, there were more than, there was at least two teachers with the surname of Evans, coming from South Wales. Um, there was a Mr Evans on the ground floor, the biology teacher, and the very room above on the first floor, there was another Mr Evans. In fact, they, he was nicknamed... Can you guess? Evans above. Evans above. He was above Evans on the ground floor. Evans above was the art teacher. And uh, he was a fine teacher, said uh, Leslie. He would use coloured chalks to produce a superb landscape of amazing lifelike portraits on the blackboard. And then he'd, he'd stand back and admire his work and say, now lads, let's see what you can do. And with that, he would go and sit at the back of the classroom and leave the boys to it. 
And then Leslie wrote about a third teacher. He was a maths teacher and he was so brilliant and so engaging. He'd give the boys a problem to work out. And then as uh, the boys tried to apply themselves to the task, he'd walk around the room, just now and then peering over boys' shoulders, indicating where uh, the boys had made a wrong calculation or taken a false step. Kindly word, a simple suggestion, and said, Leslie, we were on our way again. And incredibly, this teacher was called Mr. Emmanuel. Can you imagine that? Emmanuel is a surname, maybe it's particularly a Welsh surname. Who can forget Gladys Emmanuel in open all hours? And wasn't it the Emmanuels who designed the uh, wedding dress for Princess Diana all those years ago? Well, Leslie used the three teachers to try and get across the fact that at Christmas we celebrate the coming of God humbly in the birth and life of Jesus. God is not a dictator, a heavenly tyrant who cracks the whip and forces us to be obedient to his will or to follow his path or else. Nor is he simply a perfectionist, a provider of beauty which he expects us to imitate while he takes a distant seat away from us. He's much more like that third teacher, Mr. Emmanuel. In fact, his name is Emmanuel. Jesus was given the name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. A God who stands alongside us. And so when we get something wrong, he nudges us towards the right direction. And if you get it badly wrong and we go off the rails, there's an arm round the shoulders and every encouragement given to find the right road forward again. It was said of the first Christians with the coming of Jesus, for the first time in history, people were glad about God. So many thoughts about God or the gods pre-Christ were rather negative or frightening. Some of the gods were capricious, who would change their minds at a whim, and you never quite know where you stood. Some of the uh, gods were perceived to be angry and uh, tyrannical. Other gods were perceived to be far distant beyond us and letting us, as mere humans, get on with our lives. For the first time with the coming of Jesus, people were glad about God. He was a God who was consistent in his love, steadfast in his faithfulness, overwhelming in his compassion. At Christmas, we celebrate the word has been made flesh. God has translated God's self into the language of ordinary everyday life. He's offered us a model that we can follow and is given us a hero whom we can love with our lives. And he walks through life with us to encourage, to goad, to correct, to console, to inspire. And all of this flows from the central fact of Christmas. That's why we can celebrate, even in these more limited times of Covid. That's why, as Christians, we can celebrate Christmas with glad hearts and look forward into the future with hope. I pray God's blessing for you over the Christmas season and uh, a peaceful and happy 2021. Hopefully a better year ahead than what we have had thus far. I want to close what I say with a brief prayer, adapted from a prayer by Terry Hinks, a church minister. Mysterious and life-giving God, you come among us as word made flesh and blood, the cry of a child born in the night, the touch of a hand, the sparkle of eyes, the smile of grace, bread broken and wine poured out, blood shed, new life given. Yes, we can praise you, God, you who come to us in the life of Jesus. Yes, we can praise you, God, whose spirit breathes us into true life. Yes, we can praise you, God, who formed the universe from nothing, releasing life and new life and life forevermore. Amen. 
And now we continue as we say some intercessory prayers and then the Lord's Prayer together. We come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. God of Christmas, we've unwrapped our presents. Help us to remember those who have nothing. As we go on eating our festive foods, help us to remember those who are hungry. Despite the restrictions of this Covid Christmas, many of us have still been able to meet, or at least talk with, our family and friends. Help us to remember those who are lonely. We think about the birth of Jesus in a stable. Help us to remember all animals and be kind to them. We reflect that Mary gave birth a long way from home. Help us to remember those in refugee camps today. As we can enjoy being around those we love in our happiness, help us to remember those who are sad today and to entrust them all to you. In, In Jesus, Jesus' name. name. Amen. One way in which we can continue to pray for people whom we know might be over the Christmas period to um, look at the Christmas cards you've received. Here are just two that we've received from uh, two individuals who live alone now. They were friends of ours um, in previous circuits where we ministered and they're well on in years now in their 80s and 90s. So this is a, a card with a lovely robin on the front and it's from Jack down in West Yorkshire whose wife only died um, in October less than two months ago and, for cancer. and the card is for cancer this card's for cancer so remember people maybe who are suffering from cancer and here's a card from a friend of ours betty whom we knew when we were ministers in the kendall circuit and uh, she's now a grand old age but a lovely lady and she sent this card uh, with the stable scene on and it's a, it's a trade craft and Christian aid and CAFOD card. And we can remember all the good work that those agencies do. So it's just uh, something to think about uh, how we can remember people and um, organisations, even by simply looking at our Christmas cards um, over the next few days. So let's bring all our prayers and thoughts together as we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing carol today is O Come All Ye Faithful.
Thank you for joining us in this worship today. We close with a blessing. May the humility of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the joy of the angels and the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to us and to all people everywhere this Christmas time and evermore. Amen. <laughs>